Thank you, Marianne, and uh, welcome to our worship service this morning. We pray the Lord's blessings be upon you as we uh, gather today, and uh, we pray that uh, He would bless your time in His house. Uh, a couple of things, uh, if you weren't here uh, last week for any reason, uh, let me uh, again just uh, briefly sort of go over things. Uh, you were given a hymnal and uh, your worship folder for this morning. So uh, you can return your hymnal at the end of the service and then just take your worship uh, folder home with you. Also, we will run the communion uh, the way we uh, did last week. Again, the usher will bring you up. Uh, stay back. Uh, today we have Jeanette Ross. She's going to help us out. So she'll be wiping down the tables and the rail, which uh, should help the flow and our timing. And then uh, when everything is ready, I will ask you to come forward. I will say the words, uh, take uh, the wafer and the wine, and then I will dismiss you uh, as well. At the end of the service, uh, same thing, we will have uh, the usher. Uh, he'll usher you uh, from the back and uh, get you out of the uh, sanctuary uh, that way. So again, we do welcome you. I also wanted to uh, just mention a couple of other things. I know this week we've had a lot of uh, unrest, obviously, in our world. And uh, as I was preparing uh, the hymnals and the uh, worship folders this week, uh, one thing that I was doing, I always look for signs from our Lord and for His presence. And if you uh, think about uh, these little things here, when I was doing the hymnals, a few times I had to stick them in uh, to the uh, hymnal itself. And two times in a row, I opened right to hymn 507, which is, as you can see, one of the hymns that we are uh, singing today. And I had to kind of laugh about that and how the Lord is always watching over us. I also wanted to uh, give your attention to this uh, baby on our worship folder. You can see he's nice and relaxed. Uh, doesn't really have a care in the world. He's being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And uh, so I hope that uh, as you're in the Lord's house today, you can kind of have that same attitude. This is a respite from uh, things that have been happening in our world, and we pray the Lord's blessings be upon you as we worship together today. The one other thing I wanted to point out, today is Trinity Sunday, so when it is time for the creed, we will be doing the Athanasian Creed, that's on pages 319 and 320, and I will uh, point that out when we get to that part of our worship service. So today's order of worship is going to be Divine Service Study 4, that's on page 203. Our opening hymn is 835 on Galilee High Mountain, and we will stand on the sixth and final verse.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you are Lord, kept a record of sin, the Lord who can stand. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and faith. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call in our name, servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our service of the Word on page 204 with our Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all the faith, let us pray to the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, dwelling in majesty and filling creation with your Spirit, reveal your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, cleanse us from doubt and fear, and send us boldly into all the world to worship you with your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, living and reigning now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading on this Holy Trinity Sunday is the beginning book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 4a. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called sea. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants, yielding seeds and fruit trees, bearing fruit in which there is seed each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants, yielding seed according to their own kind, and trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind. God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. God said, Let there be light in the expanse of the heavens that separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Let them be light in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kind, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kind, and the livestock according to their kind, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its root. You shall have them for food, and every beast of the earth, and every bird of the heaven, and everything that creeps on the earth. Everything that has the breath of life has given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. 
So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading for today is going to be our sermon text. It is from Acts chapter 2, verse 14a and 22 to 36. We're going to read these verses together, then we will rise and sing the Alleluia verse on page 205. We read together from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourself know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I might not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promises of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Will you please rise? Will you please respond with the even 
numbered verses. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. And the Catholic faith is this. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. Such as the Father is, such as the Son, and such as the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not the created, The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and He is man, born from the substance of His mother in this age. Equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of others, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. Ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. Please be seated as we sing hymn 507.
text, which will be the basis of our message on this Trinity Sunday, is our second reading from the book of Acts, Peter's sermon from 14a through 22 through 36 of chapter 2, Dear Friends in Christ, if you were to describe your pastor's sermons, what might you say? Short, illustrative, inductive questions always begin and end the same way. Now you have all been very kind over the years. I pray you would also say law and gospel, not afraid of offense or sensitive topics. And most importantly, preaching Christ and his cross. You see, we all have different styles, but we should all be preaching the same basic message. Whether in the first century or the 21st, Christ and his cross are central to the proclamation of forgiveness. Now, it should be this way. For the most part, in our 6,000 LCMS congregations, we are all using the same readings on any given Sunday. There might be occurring right now thousands of messages on this reading from Acts. And there is something even more profound in common. Jesus told the first band of preachers this, It will not be you speaking, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. You see, each Sunday, the pastor, through the Holy Spirit, weaves a tapestry of sinner and saint, evil and grace, punishment and mercy, law, Gospel. What does truly inspired Christian preaching look like? Well, let's see. The pattern of preaching. Now, the first apostolic sermon preached is the message of Peter in our text that he preached at Pentecost. Now, if I were to ask you, how would you describe Peter's preaching? Well, one word is bold. He is not afraid. And we know that later in Acts, he will be in prison. Another word is eyewitness. First, at the tomb. He was at the feeding of the 5,000. And Jesus, walking on water. He was at the Transfiguration and the Passover and Gethsemane and the trial of Jesus. I mean, think of the illustrations and personal stories that Peter could put in a sermon. This humble fisherman who left his business, his wife, and his family to follow Jesus turns the attention of his audience to Christ. He boldly announced, this Jesus, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. He condemned their sin, but immediately he follows it with this. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death. What does this mean? He grabs their attention by saying that Jesus is both Lord and Christ. And while this is not in our text for today, he concludes later in Acts with this, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, we go from condemnation to forgiveness, from crushing law to comforting gospel. This is the divine pattern of Christian preaching. 
Christ was put to death on account of human sin, but raised again by the power of God. Repentance is needed and forgiveness is extended. May not be fancy, but this pattern of preaching brought thousands of believers into the faith in only a few short years. It is through this preaching and the Holy Spirit's work that millions of sinners are saved yet today. The great preacher St. Paul said bluntly, If Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. When you and I hear this text, we may find some inner satisfaction that Peter goes after the Israelites for putting Jesus to death. But for us who are the listeners, when Peter preaches, he's preaching to us. My sin and your sin held Jesus to the cross. It may be hard to hear week after week after week, but hear it we must. And while I put the message together for the congregation, it is always the Lord speaking through me. I too am convicted of all my wrongdoing. I too suffer the wrath of God. I too stand on the brink of hell, if not for the gracious work of our Savior. It is my work, but it's also my great joy each week to proclaim this to you. God raised up Jesus for your salvation. He has removed your sin and terrible consequences. He grants you the gift of His Holy Spirit given in your baptism. These are His promises. And if you do not hear this law and gospel always from this pulpit, feel free to storm the front of the church. This is the pattern of preaching. Through this God-breathed word of Scripture, the Spirit works in the preacher through His speech. And finally, in the heart of you, the listeners. Amen. At the conclusion of each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, will you please respond and hear our prayer. O blessed and holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, hear the prayers of your people and grant to us all things according to your word and promise. In the beginning, Father, your word spoke all things into being, and from nothing you made all that is. Help us to see the imprint of your love and the goodness of creation, and to exercise responsible care of all that you have entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy, throughout the ages, Father, your Spirit filled the sin-stained world with hope and called us to repentance and faith. Help us to hear the voice of your word and to respond with faith. Confessing you without fear before all manner of people and in every corner of the earth. As you planned long before the world began, deliver us in Christ that we may be your own and live according to your commands all our days. Lord, in your mercy. In government and law, Father, you work to establish and preserve order 
protecting the weak, fostering godly virtue. Bless our president, our governor, and all who make and administer and judge our laws. Deliver the world from threats of pandemic and tyranny, and preserve the nations in peace. Bless all who defend us in the armed forces, aid us in emergency and medical field, and inform us with news. Hinder those who oppress any peoples with mistruth, violence, or fear. Lord, in your mercy. St. Paul said, All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Lord, this world is moving in one direction the one God has put in place. He moves his people with it, not to cause morbid fear, but to call to us to straighten up and raise our heads because our redemption is drawing near. Lord, in your mercy, in the hour of trial and the moment of trouble, you are there, Father. Hear us as we cry to you for the sake of the sick, the troubled in mind, wounded in heart, those who grieve. Especially want to remember Barry Hamlin, who this week finished his radiation treatments for his lung cancer, and now got some good news that he can take a break for a few months. We ask that you would deliver him from his afflictions, as it be your will, and any other who are suffering. Sustain them in hope with a patient heart and strength for the day. Lord, in your mercy, Father, in the blessed supper of our Lord, your Son has offered us his body as the bread of heaven and his blood as the cup of salvation. Help us to receive this blessed sacrament with faith and to show forth the fruits of the Spirit in lives of faith, repentance, and goodness. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in his name. Amen. Our worship will continue at the top of page 208 with our preface. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
every one of you. Uh, great to see you uh, once again this morning. Uh, thank you, Mary Ann. Great job on the organ. Thank you, Jeanette, for your help. Uh, things went uh, a little uh, smoother today and a little quicker as well, so we appreciate that. Uh, again, I don't have uh, any announcements per se. I uh, just pray that the uh, Lord will be with you. Continue to keep uh, my same uh, office hours. Uh, there is a day this week I might be out of town, uh, so please be sure to just call ahead. Uh, it was great to see a lot of you this week that popped in, said hello, and stopped by, and, and uh, pray that the Lord will continue to watch over you. Does anyone have any announcements or anything? Oh, I know. Uh, one thing I did want to say, uh, we did not have a couple of door offerings for our, our seminary students, and uh, he's now uh, getting ready to leave on this vicarage. Uh, but next Sunday, which will be the second Sunday, that usual Sunday that we do it, we will have a door offering for our seminary students. And we'll send that to uh, wherever he's serving his vicarage, if he's there by, by now. But uh, plan on that next week, a uh, door offering uh, for our seminary students. For those of you worshiping online, if you're not going to be in, you want to contribute to that, uh, please send that in this week, and uh, we will get that to our seminary students. Thank you.